Mother, I'm not drinking. <laughs> All right. Bye. I'm looking for the room where these Janes are hooping it up. Jane? Jane who? The A.G. Wait a minute, I got it written down here. The Aero Girls of America, Miss Vi Benton's party. I guess that's it in there. You can't go in. No. No. I've been asked by Miss Benton, the hostess of the party, to guard the place. See that no men get in there. Say, who are you anyway? My name happens to be Partington Chelmsford. Partington Chelmsford? Sir Horace Pottington Chemsford, am I right? Yes. Yes, say, the story is that you're uh, stuck on Miss Benton. Is that set? Is what set? Engaged? She's not set. Well, I'll ask it myself. From all accounts, she's a great girl. And this looks like a great party. Look here. Who are you nosing around at this time of night, asking about things that don't concern you? Who are you? What are you? I'm just a poor little tired reporter from the morning echo. And I want to get this story and go home and go to bed. Yeah. As you all know, we're about to shake our little hips to England. Da, 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 now, seriously, girls. We're going to crash into a lot of awfully good European competition. But when the international trophy is presented, who are the girls who are going to win it? That's right, well, I've got to do a child, that is. And another thing about your behavior. Oh, so sorry. Oh, now, I'm the sap that's sponsoring this boat ride. And I want you high flyers to remember to keep your tanks clean, your landing gears on the ground, and don't go into any tailspin. my pal and my boss. And I know there's a very good reason why he hasn't turned up. However, we're going right on with the meeting. Uh, we are honored tonight with the presence of Mr. Timothy Grosvenor, president of the National Seaboard Bank. Uh, Mr. Grosvenor. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, it is to be uh, regretted that uh, the guest of honor is late. For the purpose of this dinner, as I understand it, was a gesture made by you gentlemen as a token of esteem to a young man who has been somewhat aptly termed in the last year, a modern financial wizard. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm in the state of the office. Say, if you don't think that cotton situation is a wow, then I'm an Egyptian. Ha! We've been fighting for the last two hours to stabilize the cotton market. Sorry you're not aboard, baby. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Grosvenor is making a speech. Oh, hello, Mr. Grosvenor. How are you? Glad to see you. Go right ahead. Go on. Go on. Well, in view of the fact that this dinner was given in your honor, Mr. Day, I should have thought some sort of an apology might have been forthcoming. What's well, all right. Don't apologize. Go right ahead. Go mind me. Go on, Mr. Grosvenor. Please go right on. Please go right on, Mr. Grosvenor. Don't mind Larry. But even now, Mr. Day's attention is elsewhere. Order, Larry. Order, please. Order. Order. Sure, I'll order. I haven't had my dinner. Waiter, waiter. Go on, Mr. Grosvenor. Right here, sir. What are you fellas eating? Yeah. No wonder you're losing your waistline. Here, give this to a bellboy. Let him eat it for me. Bring me some cornflakes and milk. Warm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Go on, Mr. Grover. Uh, please continue, would you, Mr. Grover? Please. <clears throat> uh, to resume. In the music of the word America can be heard the distant drums of Gettysburg. Uh, Mr. Day, London on the telephone, sir. London. All right, fine. Excuse oh, me, Mr. Go on, Mr. Grover. Now, I respect this oh. all afternoon. All uh, right. I'm very sorry, oh, Mr. Grover. Oh. Please don't mind laughing. Oh, I'm very sorry, Mr. Grover. Yeah. Very Check certified? Accepted? Receded? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> How many bales? A million. What do you know about that? Fine. Goodbye. What do you know about that? Those Egyptians had a million bales of cotton to dump on a market and break it, but we feed them to it and bought control. Watch cotton open in the morning. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Governor. Gentlemen, is it your wish that I continue? Oh, yes, indeed. Please, go. Yes, go on. As I said before, an American. This Mr. Day is an American, made out of the kind of grit that gave us our Garys, our Schwabs, 
Our Henry Ford. And our Kellogg. <laughs> <laughs> and our Henry Ford. Hey, I'm bad. <laughs> going my way, Preston. I'm good. I'm sorry. Hey, Larry, apologize to him. Please. Hurt his feelings. Go on and apologize, will you? I wouldn't hurt his feelings. I didn't know what I'm talking about. Mr. Coleman, just a moment. Just a moment. You know, your speech was fine. Your voice was great. I like that thing about Americans. You're not upset, are you? Upset? What? Yes, you know, I had one of those days, you know, cotton situation. Oh, yes, I see, I see. You know, I wouldn't intentionally be rude for anything in the world. You I know. see. One must not impede this explosive urge, this new young America. Ah, well, you do understand, don't you? Certainly. That's fine. Certainly. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> really, uh, you know, Larry's uh, <laughs> happy as a king. <laughs> <laughs> kiss it is a very small matter. Oh, don't be silly. Di, you're the coldest creature, but I adore you. Thanks. I console myself with the thought that underneath your somewhat frigid exterior, there thumps a jolly little heart, going bumpity-bump, bumpity-bump, beating away for me. Well, I'm beating away from you, old darling, because I'm going off to bed. Excellent place, bed. <laughs> Hello, Polisco. Good evening, Sir Holmes. I thought I told them not to lock that door. I thought you said my father wasn't in. He's just come in, miss, through the service entrance. For 
Hello, my darling. Where have you been? I, uh, I've been playing bridge. Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, downstairs, in, in the apartment. Contract, bridge? Oh, uh, speaking of contract, Vi, is uh, your engagement to this young man to be kept secret? Oh, I don't know. In my considered opinion, Governor, long engagements are fatal. Well, I... good night, Horace. Oh, uh, good night, darling. Good night, my child. Good night. Hmm. I say, uh, do you realize that I've been secretly engaged to your fair daughter for months, both of us madly in love with each other and all that sort of thing, and I haven't been kissed once? We'll soon fix that. What a country. Oh, that man. Sure idea. Have him paged and call me. Yes, I'll wait. Oh, I've just seen her, sir. Who? Oh, a veritable Juliet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get a big kick out of that darling, don't you? Peep it. Well, I find it's a very instructive study, sir. Yes, sir. Just as you obtain results by watching the market, so I learn the different methods of making love by observation. And I find these observations are much more effective than uh, certain books. Aren't you a little bit afraid that you're liable to go boom? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> may I suggest, sir, that you'll come to it, too? What do you mean that I'll go boom? Oh, my dear sir, why, anyone more sane than yourself would be very hard to find. But all the great ones of the world fell at one time or another, sir. You take Napoleon. Napoleon studied to be a great soldier, and he was a very great general. And then little Josephine came tripling into his life, and a very great general went poof. <laughs> so you think I'm liable to go poof? Well, there's a vast difference, sir, between the art of making money and the art of making a lady. <laughs> well, it's plenty of time, Roger. <laughs> Uh, you, you shouldn't have been a valid, or... <laughs> Hurry up that call, will you? <laughs> Make a lady. <laughs> What's this? Napoleon, sir. Napoleon? At Elba. Elba. A great man, sir, but lonely. Yes. Well, maybe you're right, Roger. There'll be plenty of time for that. When the time comes, I'll be there. You know me, Roger. Anything I go after, I get. Hello. Oh, hello, Fred. Now, listen. 8.30 in the morning, I want you to go to my vault and get all my securities. Yeah, Bankers Trust, Mellon's Trust, and Guarantee Trust. That's right. Right? See you first thing in the morning in the office. I beg pardon, sir. Do you ever dream of girls? <laughs> no, what I dream is usually about horses. Technically much safer, sir. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Morning, sunshine. What's new this morning? Mr. Day's been asking for you, Mr. Carrington. How is he this morning? Busy. Anything new? Uh, Miss Benton called about an hour ago. Oh, yes. Get her on the wire, will you? Yes. You got a number? Yes, I have it right here. Fine. All right, shoot it over to Grattan's immediately, will you? Hello, Grattan. Oh, hello, Junior. 
I'm depositing more margin. Yeah, about a million and a half. It's on its way over. Say, what's radio? All right, fine. Buy me another 10,000. Well, use your own judgment. Call me back. Well, what's the idea? Larry, you missed a great party last night. I don't know how you fellas can do it. You stay up all night burning tissue, and then you haven't anything left in the morning. <laughs> if we were all Larry Days, there wouldn't be any Jimmy Carrington. <laughs> Late nights and women. I never have anything to do with women. You know that. By the way, Mr. Carrington, that lady had left the house. Thank you, you better take those securities over to Grant and yourself. Hurry up. Stand right away. Hello. Hello, yeah, there's a day. Mr. Day, please. Mr. Day, please. Have you an appointment? Oh, yes. If there are any messages for me today, will you let me know? Why? I don't think I've had the pleasure. <laughs> Pardon me. But will you please ask Mr. Day if you speak to a girl from his own hometown? Mr. Day is very busy. I can't interrupt him. Well, I reckon I understand how busy he is. And he doesn't even know me. But be a honey and ask him, will you? Well, it won't do any good. But I'll try. Hello. Hello. What's your name? I know this is a most terrible imposition, Mr. D, but I'm a stranger in town. And I'm in a heap of trouble. Okay. Trouble? Well, I don't want any money or anything, but I would like about five minutes of your time. What is it? Please. What'd you do that for, honey? He's busy. Yes, Mr. Day. Where that call to Paris? Uh, the call to Paris hasn't come through yet, Mr. Day. Well, what's the matter with him? You're taking cable. Uh, yes, Mr. Day. You see, Mr. Day, all I wanted was just five minutes of your time. Say, what the hell? What, what is... Well, what happens after dinner? Moonlight and love, sir. If you step that way. Uh, one of the advantages of a penthouse, if I may say so. Yeah, she said something about bringing her parachute. Parachute? She's an aviator. Oh, my word. Uh, but still, in every sense, a woman, we hope. Well, of course. What do you mean? Uh, well, you see, our tactics... Uh, uh, well, sir, I, I have taken the advantage of uh, arranging the scene for a little moonlight work. <laughs> you mean dirty work? Well, that would be up to you. Ah. We well, assume, sir, that you have led the... My dear sir. How that? Well, it's a trifle collegiate, but you have the idea. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> now, sir, while on this seat, there is a very fascinating hole that I've seen used by the Grand Duke with people of effectiveness. Would you mind sitting this way, sir? I'll try anything once. Once was usually enough, sir. While in this position, there is a wonderful line to be said, sir. A line which never fails. Oh. From the moment that we met, I knew this had to happen. <laughs> Now on, from now on, cross your own conscience. She's late. What time is it? You hear that? There she is now, yes, sir. Oh, listen, listen. You hear that? Impatient. That's a very good omen, sir. Yeah. Uh, don't forget the bow, sir. Tell the bow. That's it. Well, that's it. She won't see me as she comes in, sir. Oh, what a picture will present itself. Yes. The room, the soft lights, and you. Hurry up, hurry up. Yes, yes, yes. waited all my life for this moment. What the... Roger! Roger! Yes, sir. Look at this. Oh, my word! Oh, it's the electrical person, sir. Come with me, my man. I'll show you what's what. I ain't your man, and I know what's what. Yes. Hello. Hello. 
Hold the line, sir. I think we someone any minute. Yeah, business. What? Seeing what all? Who? Seeing who all? Hold the wire a minute, Larry, will you? Oh, <laughs> uh, someone wants to speak with you. Yes, yeah, a business associate. But there must be the time and the place. I can't understand. Will you speak louder? Goodbye, busy boy. We sail in ten minutes. Thanks for the buggy ride. Take it. I hope I didn't get you out of bed. Is this a joke? Well, say, quit your kidding, will you? You'll be sore as a bell. <laughs> what do you mean I can't stand you up this way? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'll show you what I'm going to do about it. I'll show her what I'm going to do. <laughs> Big Ethel. La famille Benton, j'étais là 50 fois aujourd'hui. Je sais. Le joli poule, là, hein? Bah. La cabine impériale. Qui là-dedans? Je ne savais pas qu'elle était occupée. Tu ne savais pas? Non. Un millionnaire américain. Oh, un millionnaire américain? Oui. Ah, c'est <rire> Fritz is not here, madame. I am Alphonse. Well, I don't care what your name is. Can you fix the light? Oh, the light. <laughs> For a beautiful lady, I can fix anything. The fuse blew out. Come on. Exploded. I am not surprised. What? Madame, this robe for bed. Anything is liable to explode. What are you talking about? What have I thought about? From the moment that I saw madame's pretty little ankles tripping on the gangplank. So what kind of a steward are you? Uh, I'm the kind of a steward, madame, that makes this line so popular with the ladies. Well, you're fresh enough. <laughs> I watched madame as she came aboard. I noticed the invitation in her eyes. And I said to myself, I've waited all my life for this moment. You didn't bother about that light. You get out of here. Oui, madame. Ah, what a delicious perfume. Is this perfume called by any chance uh, embracing one? What's that? Kiss me. What? Kiss me. You're either drunk or you're mad. Now you get out of here or I'm going to call the captain. <laughs> you. Me. Why didn't you come to dinner? Stuart. You have been drinking. Why didn't you come to dinner? I suppose it's natural, as Stuart's last night on shore, that he should get drunk. 
You laughed at me. Why did you laugh at me? I suppose you have lots of children and perhaps a wife. And the loss of your position would mean a great deal oh, for you. Oh, if you only hadn't laughed at me. Stewart, those dirty glasses. Take them out. And, uh, oh, my shoes. I like a high polish on my shoes. Are you all right, Clyde? Oh, yes. Who are you talking to? Only a steward, Daddy. <laughs> These shoes are the shoes of Madame? Yes. I am surprised that Madame has such big feet. You get out of here. You pay for that. <laughs> ah, hello, hello. Je prononce que tout l'heure, on se fait chier à tout à l'heure. Set for the night? Yes, sir. Flowers and a bracken wall all around? Yes, sir. 
Kiss me all around, sir. That's fine. <clears throat> Getting worse. Wow. Better get Carrington on the telephone, Tony. I'll talk to him myself this oh, time. I'm very sorry, sir, but this Wall Street panic seems to be very serious. You won't be able to get through to Mr. Carrington until midnight. Well, midnight's all right. Yes, sir. Will you have the cocktails already? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'm afraid you cannot cover your account. Panic is on, getting worse. They will surely sell you out, sit you off. Bah. <laughs> What is this? This, sir? This is a little impetus that I used to concoct for the dear dead duke, sir. Known as Angel's Breath. Angel's what? Angel's Breath. Oh, I thought you said death. Death? Oh, no, sir. On the contrary, sir. Life. Well, it sounds great, but I don't drink. No, sir. <coughs> Vivian, ever since I came aboard this ship, I know you've been laughing at me. You came into... Isn't that a funny thing? Every time I get that far, I, I seem to stop dead. I don't, I don't seem to be able to go any further. Yes, I've noticed that. I think, so. the trouble is too many words, uh, too much argument, too, many, too much pleading, too many conventions. Hmm. That, sir, if I may say, is the object of this cocktail. The limits imposed by civilization are seemingly removed under the influence of this, sir. Collars, cuffs, pretty speeches, they vanish, poof, and in their place, an animal. A caveman, huh? Well, if I may say so, sir, the caveman is a piker compared to the primitive beasts wandering through the forests in search of their mates, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Can you picture the lion, sir? Wambling through the forest in search of the lioness? What does he say? <laughs> I don't know. Well, does he say, Vivian, you've been laughing at me? No. Well, what does he say? He doesn't say, sir. He goes... <laughs> Then you see what I mean, sir. <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> Monkey business. Uh, monkeys too, yes, sir. Have you ever tried this? Oh no, sir. I prefer to remain a domestic animal, sir. You want to try it on me first? Well, I've seen it work, sir, and there's no waiting. Mm, what's that? This is the essence of pagaraga, sir. Pagaraga. Pagaraga, yes, sir. Pagaraga is a very powerful drug, sir. A very powerful herb found on the northern coast of Africa. Very rough place, sir. Very... Ooh. Why don't you try one? Oh, <laughs> the effect of this, sir, is instantaneous. I, I wouldn't care to try it. No, sir. Well, try a little one. Oh, no, no, sir. Thank you. Oh, go on. No, sir. No, no, really. Well, no, you... no, no. Now, now, Mr. Dave, I really. I want you to drink to my success. Oh, <laughs> no, I... <laughs> well, you can't refuse to drink to my success, Roger. <laughs> well, uh, to your success, sir. But nothing else. No. How does it taste? What? I said, how does it taste? If you want to know, why don't you try one yourself? And another thing, you're going to manage this woman situation yourself. There's a Polish woman in the second cabin, a blonde. I may be two hours. I can't tell. Who knows? Well, Aunt Stavignana. Yes? Well, you do, and you'll attend to it yourself. <laughs> Vivian, ever since I've been on this boat, I know. Sorry. Ah, nice little cabin you have here. Well, what can I do for you? Day, I don't know whether you happen to be aware that I'm the fiance to Miss Benton. What? We're engaged to be married. Who? You? Why? Miss Benton. No. Oh, yes. Oh, you're kidding. On the contrary. However, in view of the fact that you were in ignorance of this, I'm prepared to overlook what there might have been consummate impertinence on your part in asking her here alone uh, for a cocktail. You mean that she's not coming? Of course she's not coming. I've forbidden her. Oh. Sorry to be the bearer of such ill tidings, but 
There you are. So you're not coming. It was all a joke. <laughs> what, did, what did you say, Dave? Huh? Oh, have a drink. A drink? I do, yes. Well, you better go. Thanks very much. Hello, cocktails, eh? I saved quite a few ingredients, too. Well, cheerio. Happiness, prosperity, love one another, sort of thing. Not coming. What? I said she's not coming. I told you she wasn't coming. And look here, Dave. I'm slow to anger, but once roused, I'm something to cope with. And I'm quite prepared to defend my rights with a suck on the nose, a punch on the jaw, a kick in the back. First drink of my life to the first love of my life. Long life and happiness. Oh, you wouldn't be happy with him. <laughs> no matter what happens, I'll always drink to you. Drink and drink and drink and drink and drink till the world goes around. <laughs> Are you hurt, sir? No. A doctor, perhaps? No. 
Please, Buster, I'll draw you a cold bath. You'll be all right in just a moment, sir. The effect goes just as quickly as it comes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. May I come in? Miss Benton, sir. Oh, she's not coming. What do you mean by not coming? Oh, I thought he didn't drink. He doesn't. He thought you weren't coming. Congratulations. I wish you every happiness in the world. <laughs> and a very great general went.
a cop. <laughs> from the crowd. Mm. What's the matter with you, Larry? We land in four hours, and I may never see you again. I'm going back to New York. I suppose I shouldn't say this to you after what I heard this afternoon, but... There was a reason why I left New York at a moment's notice. And there was a reason why I hadn't taken my eyes off you. And there was a reason why I gave up everything I thought was best in the world. And that reason was that I found myself for the first time in my life in love. Madly, desperately in love with you. I suppose I shouldn't say this. You must forgive me. But I had to tell you. Oh, Larry, you're sweet. I like you awfully. Do you? Well, let me tell you something. Never since I was a kid of ten and knelt to my mother have I felt like kneeling to anyone. But you are my idol, and I worship you. There'll never be anyone else but you, ever. Are you laughing at me? No. You 
you are. You're laughing at me. I'm not. Oh, don't lie. I'm not lying. You are lying. You're laughing at me. That's a low, rotten, despicable trick. Oh, how dare you? Oh, you're laughing at me. Yes, I'm laughing at you. Huh. You fool. Oh, there you are, Vivian. Yes, here I am. I've been looking for you all over the paddock, hunting everywhere, in the corridors, in the card room, and everywhere. If I'd known you were going to bring an audience, I would have put on a better show. Good night. You know, that fellow's gone potty. What's he talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, Vi. The canvas broke. Get out of here. Get out of here, all of you. Come on, Vi. Let's stop. Oh, go away. No, but Vi, please, come on. Leave me alone, will you? Oh, all right. I've been looking all over for you, Mr. Day. Where is it? New York is on the telephone. Where? It's in the Marconi room. Where's the Marconi room? Why, uh, uh this way, sir. <laughs> Mr. Day is here. Mr. Day? Where's that telephone? Right there, sir. I'm sorry, Larry, but I'm broke too, Dylan. Broke two. Where's that telephone? Right here, sir. All right, that's all. Hello. Hey, hello, Carrington. Well, what's it all about? Oh, stop crying. Go on, tell me. You saw Grattan and Sutherland? They wouldn't carry me. Hmm. Yes, I just had a cable from Dylan. He said he's broke. <laughs> well, I'm in good company. What about those other securities in my vault, in my insurance? Oh, yeah, I remember, I remember. I had my power of attorney. That's right. Well, that means I'm wiped out, and you don't mean maybe. <laughs> Who? Grosvenor? Shot himself. Oh, that's too bad. No, I haven't seen a paper. No, I haven't read anything. Hmm. What did Steele close in? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Well, we still have the office furniture. I'll call you tomorrow from Southampton. Oh, I'm all right. Fine. Yeah, stick to the ship. Wait, 
My dog, Foggy, and uh, Noggles. <laughs> I say, why, they, they, they can smell me even from here. <laughs> Bless their little heart. Now, now lie down. Uh, be dead, dead. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Look, he's gone. He's dead. 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 Oh, good morning, Miss Benton. Where is he? I've searched all over the boat for him. Why, he's on deck A. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, the boat deck, Miss Benton. Thank you, Roger. I, I just wanted to say goodbye. Yes. Have you? Just wanted to say goodbye. <laughs> well, goodbye. It's been great fun. Beautiful fun. Beautiful fun. I wanted you to know that I didn't know those kids were there. What kids? Where? In the boat. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you did. You were very unkind. Was I? Well, I'm sorry. And I want you to know that you um, hurt my wrist. Look. Oh, I'm so sorry. Huh. Still cross? Cross? No, I'm not cross. Well, then you know that I wasn't laughing at you. Oh, I'm sure you were. <laughs> Don't you think that there's something rather sad about the end of the sea voyage? Yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> you know, this whole business has been sort of a hysterical thing. I, I came aboard the boat and sort of reaching for the moon and... <laughs> Well, I'm sorry about everything. Oh, don't be. It's... It's been... Beautiful fun. Beautiful fun. Well... Goodbye. Goodbye. To your left. I would like everything left in the cabin until you hear definitely from me. I will. Thank you. Yes. Goodbye, Roger. You saw him? Yes. He told you? Yes. What do you mean? Tell me what? Well, you see, Miss Benton. Goodbye. And more than that, I believe there are tremendous obligations. I want to tell you something. 
I just saw Roger. Last night you you said that you'd never knelt to anyone but your mother. And I believed you. And I want you to believe me when I say that I've never been happy until. Well, I'm going to tell you something that. Well, I would have sworn I never would have told any man. I love you, Larry. You do? Oh, yes, but it, it, it's, out of, it's, it's out of the question. I'm broke. Why, you? Well, of course, you're... You're you. Me? You're worth millions. Oh, why, that doesn't make any difference. Oh, what kind of a man do you think I'd be? You're Larry Day. That's the kind of a man you are. Why, you couldn't be broke. I've known big men all my life. You can make 50 fortunes back. Why, do you think I'd love you the way I do if... if you weren't you? Why, you broke, why... Wait a minute. What? I just discovered something. Something I never realized. I know what woman means. She's not just the sort of a thing that you pursue and love and hold. something that leans over and whispers in your ear what you are, what you can do, and what you're going to do. Say, listen, let me tell you something. Sir, I'm sure it'll be a charming wedding whenever it happens. My dear, the boat sails in about an hour, and I can't find Larry anywhere. Oh, he'll be here. Bye-bye. You know, I think I'm going to change these duds. We'll have to get married on the ship if I can find him. Why, then, my services won't be required. Oh, well, stick around. We'll have a lot of fun anyway. That's right. Now, coming up. I found him, by in conference down at the bank. And what he told them was nobody's business. He said he left a message with the secretary that he would be married at the town hall. He said the mayor was going to do it for him. <laughs> I told him I wanted a wedding. Well, you win, by He's on his way up here now. He's changing his clothes like the car. Hello, everybody. Hey, I'm awfully sorry. I'm oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hello, my dear. Did you get my message? Oh, this is dreadful. I'm sorry. How do you do, sir? See, what I didn't tell those others is the bank isn't worth telling. Did you ever see such a market? Watch copper open in the morning. I'm shooting the work. <laughs> sorry. I want you to meet the Reverend Steele, Mr. Day. Well, how do you do, Mr. Steele? How are you? Steele? You've been going up right along, huh? <laughs> that's funny. No, no, that's rude. I'm off. That's too bad. What do you do? Oh, that's... Oh, no. You see? Oh, now you're laughing at me. I always will. <laughs> what do we do now, Vi? Suit yourself. I don't care. Come right, come right along, Mr. Steele. Steele. 187 and a half.